Congratulations and thank you very much for purchasing your new HRV eHev, the hybrid powered brand new HRV. So in this video, what we're going to show you is a little bit of information to help the handover of the vehicle so that you can really, really maximize your benefit out of this car. So we're going to take various features and some of the things that we can actually tailor to your specific needs, as I say, so that you can get the very best out of this vehicle. Now, we'll look at some features from the outside and also the inside, but of course, we need to get inside the vehicle first. Now, the car is locked and we have a couple of ways we can get into it. So I do have the key in my pocket and I can simply press the unlock button on my key fob and it will unwind the door mirrors and allow me to get into the vehicle. And when inside, I can just press the power button and the power will be on to the vehicle. And of course, the um, flip side of that is Closing the car, press the lock button, and it will wind those door mirrors in for us. However, because they benefit from the keyless access system, we don't necessarily have to have the key in our hand. So as we can tell, the car is locked, but I have the key in my pocket in the detection zone. All I need to do is put my hand in behind the door handle and you'll actually hear it unlock. You also see the door mirror unwind. So now we can get into the car just as before, but without needing to take the key out of our pocket, handbag, purse, wherever. Now to lock it, this time, we just need to put a little bit of contact over those three ridges on top of the, the door handle. And I can also check that the door is indeed locked. After about three to five seconds, as soon as I put my hand in, it will unlock that door for me. So there are a couple of ways that we can actually gain access to the car and get ready to drive it away. Now, if uh, you actually have a flat battery in your remote, then what you can do is take out the, the blade and pop it into the door lock on the driver's side to manually get into the vehicle. And of course, if you did have a flat battery, the alarm's going to be going off. All you do is you hold that key fob over the power button to actually allow you to uh, start the car and carry on your journey and also take the alarm off. So now we're at the back of the car, we've undone the, the fuel flap, we've done the little lever inside the uh, driver's footwell area so we can open up this, undo our fuel cap, and we have a nice little storage area on here so we can just pop it inside there so that when we're fueling up, the, the cap's not banging across the, uh, the bodywork. And of course, when we're done, just pop it back in and you can't over tighten it because it has a ratchet system. You know that's done. And then, of course, you can close it nice and simple. Then when we make our way to the, the back of the vehicle, we're going to uh, open the tailgate. Now, this has been set to a lower position. So imagine for a moment if you were going to store the car in your garage, but you've got a low roof. Well, we can actually adjust how high the tailgate goes purely by low, lowering it down or pushing it up. So we'll push it up now into its highest position. And then all we do to set it is press and hold this button for a little while. We get two little beeps just to confirm that it's now set. So in a moment, I'll close it and reopen it just so you can see what height it goes to. But while we're in the, uh, the boot area, you see just behind here is where the, uh, the toolkit, like the temporary repair kit, just in case you get a puncture. But of course, I'd always recommend call out your, uh, your roadside assistance to do that for you. So now to close the, uh, the tailgate, let's just do the, the hands-free operation. Um, that will close down for us. And the next time we open it, just show, show a varied way to open it. We can use the little handle just underneath, a little micro switch underneath there will open that for us. You'll see it goes right the way to the top. So now we can get our luggage out. We can do whatever we want to. And of course we used that button before, but now what we can do, we have this walk away close feature. So because I'm in the detection zone and because I have the key in my pocket, you have to have that uh, on your person. You can press this button top right hand corner. It will go green. And I've now got maybe two seconds, 20 seconds. It doesn't matter how long to actually walk away from the car, providing I've got the key in my pocket. It will detect when I'm actually out of its detection zone. And I could be now in my hallway, my porchway, or just walking down the road. And it's actually closed. And potentially, if that was the only thing that we'd opened, locked the car for me. Now we're inside, let's take a look at some of the controls that you're going to be using first time you drive the vehicle. So just behind the steering wheel, we have two stalks, 
on my left hand side are the ones for the lights and the indicators. Now the default position for the lights is in auto, so that means you don't have to worry about anything. The daylight sensors will automatically put the headlights on for you and in the right situation it will actually put on full beam for you as well because we have high beam support system. If for any reason you wanted to turn the headlights off you can just simply rotate the little um, end cap there to the off position. If you wanted fixed side lights you'd rotate up and if you wanted fixed uh, dip beam you'd go one position further but I think for most people certainly myself I'd just leave it in the auto position and the car looks after everything for me. If for any reason you want to go uh, full beam you would just push the stalk away from you and then pull that towards you. If you want to let somebody know your road presence you can just pull it towards you for a quick flash of full beams. Now something we're going to be using an awful lot of course is the indicators. Now if you push it very slightly you'll feel a little bit of resistance that's where the car will go into it's indicating three times for you and then it will self cancel if you wanted to have them on for a longer duration you just push it past that resistance and of course you can then cancel it or the steering lock would cancel it for you now the stalk on the right hand side of the steering wheel is for the wipers so if I just turn the wheel a little bit here um, we're in the off position now if I just wanted a, a single wipe of the windscreen I can push it into the mist position and it will clear the screen for me there and then. Um, if I pop it down one position, that's into the auto position. That's where I personally prefer it to be because the rain sensor is then going to look at how much water is on the screen and how quickly it needs to wipe the screen. And I do have some control over that on how sensitive I want it to be. Less sensitive or more sensitive. Midpoint is, is good for me. If I wanted it in a fixed low position, I just push it one more position down and for high it will be right the way to the bottom. I'm going to leave it into auto and if I wanted to get a squirt of water on the windscreen, some nice screen wash on there, I'd just pull that towards myself. Now on the end cap we actually have the controls for the rear wiper. So again we've got the, the, the default off position. Uh, first click is for the intermittent wipe of the rear screen. Then the next one is a fixed on position and then I can rotate it a little bit further on the, the sprung part of the, uh, the control there which will give me a, a squirt of screen wash on the rear screen. So let's turn that one back to the off position. To go through some of the steering wheel controls we're going to pop the car into accessory position. So in order to do that they're all keyless uh, access on these vehicles so the key is inside here. I'm going to press my power button twice and the car is in accessory uh, position now. So on the steering wheel, working from the left to the right hand side, we have our volume controls over here. So we can obviously increase or decrease those. Then we have this roller system here and home. So we can show you a little bit closer on the kind of screens that we've got in there. In fact, let's do that now for you. So with this little home button here, we can actually influence what we see on the TFT screen in front of us. So at the moment, we've got the, uh, the power meter so we can see if we've got charge being put into the battery, the needle will go into the green, and when we're using power, the needle would go into the blue. So if we just press the, the home button, what we can see there is we've got the power and charge, we've got power flow, that's a nice one where we can see where the power's been taken from. Uh, when we're driving, we'd see power going to the road wheels as well, and we get an indication of what sort of state of charge is in the electric battery there as well. Uh, we have range and fuel, so we can see how many miles is left in the tank and the, the most recent fuel economy figures. Then we've got speed and time, we have our audio, we have any phones that are attached to the vehicle, we have uh, our navigation. Speed alarms for instance, if we just click on that one, we can see that we could have speed alarms set for, in this case, 30 and 50, but they've actually been uh, turned off, so it's not going to beep at us as we're driving along. Um, navigation, I didn't really show you that one, but if we've got a destination set in through our car's navigation, it will give you turn by turn. Uh, when there's not a destination set in, you get the, the compass icon there. Seat belts, it will give us information who's wearing belts in the, the vehicle. Safety support, so there's another way you can actually access this, but this is where we can actually see um, what features we've got on the vehicle. So we scroll up and down there, and we can turn on or off our uh, road departure mitigation, or indeed on this particular car, because we have blind spot information, we have that also. We have low speed braking control, 
uh, collision mitigation braking system as well. If we wanted to turn them off, we'd just press the little button there. But of course, I want to keep myself as safe as possible, so I'm going to pop that back on. Back on the, uh, the home button, we can customize the displays. So if we wanted to um, select any of the particular features that we either did or didn't want on there, you can actually just select them, maybe take them off if you want to, and then they'll no longer be on that little list for you. Then information, our very last one, tells us, of course, we're not going anywhere, so we'd need to push the brake pedal and push the power button to start us on. So moving along from there, just above the, the home button, we have our speech button. So we could be talking to the car for various functions to operate, or we could be, uh, when we've paired a phone, using our Google Assistant or Siri to actually allow some of those phone features to work as well. And we've got skipping forwards and skipping backwards on the, uh, the tracks that we might be listening to for audio. Right in the center, that's where our horn is. So we've got that nice and central. Now we're on the right hand side of the steering wheel. This is where we'll find some of the, the extra safety features that we have within Honda Sensing. So we have a speed limiter, intelligent speed limiter and cruise control all through that button there. But to operate those, first of all, we need to press this button here. Now we've done that, we can actually cycle through our intelligent limiter that's there, our cruise control, and our regular speed limiter. So I could set that to 40 or 50 or 30 miles an hour, and I can do that by using the set and the plus and minus buttons over there. My personal favorite though, is the intelligent speed limiter, because this uses the most recently seen uh, speed limit that was at the side of the road on the traffic sign, and it will take that and limit my accelerating speed up to that point once I've pressed the set button. So from that, we can see that the sign it saw was 40 miles an hour. The intelligent limiter icon has gone green, so it's ready and it's active. So unless I go full throttle, I'm not going to accelerate past 40 miles an hour. A lovely peace of mind feature. If at any point I want to cancel those, I can just press the cancel button fairly much in the center there. Just below that, we have our lane keeping assist system. So this is the um, part of the system that uses the painted lines on the road and through talk through the steering it will help to keep me centered. So I've got less driving fatigue and it will also help control me a little bit so I don't make those unintentional uh, exits from the lane because if I move lane without indicating, it'll give me a little bit of steering input to say, did you mean to, to make that maneuver? So a real great feature. This little one here is about the distance we want for the adaptive cruise control between me and the vehicle in front. So we can have roughly, for argument's sake, like a one, one and a half or a two second gap uh, between me and the vehicle in front. And it's using the camera at the top to keep me that safe distance. So I can just press those buttons on there. And of course, when we're active and we're driving, we can increase or decrease that distance between me and the vehicle in front. Just below that, nice simple one, love this, it's the heated steering wheel, keeping me nice and toasty in those winter months. So to keep us the ideal temperature inside the car, um, this is where we'll find the controls for heating. So right in the center, we have the on off button for the, the fan and you'll see everything illuminates. So if we work from one side to uh, the other, let's go through all of the different buttons on there and what they're going to offer for you. So on the extreme left, we have the, the heated seat button for the passenger, three levels, let's turn that off. There's nobody there, let's not be wasteful. Then we have the sync button. So this is illuminated green now, which means that the driver and the passenger's temperature will be synchronized together. So if I turn my temperature, you'll see that the passenger's changes as well. If we turn the sync button off, they're now totally independent to each other. So we can have 18 degrees on the passenger side and 23 on the driver's side. We can have the blower on without the aircon. If we want aircon on, we have the, the AC button there. And again, we can turn that off. We have the button for the heated uh, front screen, so that will concentrate all of that um, air conditioned air on the inside of the windscreen to keep it nicely defogged and nice and clear for us. Then we have the, the rear button there, which will do the heated rear screen and that's also tied into the heated door mirrors for us as well. And again, with both of those, you get the little uh, icons just to let you know that those have been activated. And of course, our mode allows us to, to choose where the, uh, the ventilation is coming from. 
If you want the car to look after everything for you, apart from you, know, you set the temperature, press the auto. Because with that, when we set auto, it will figure out where is the best um, vents to use and also what the best fan speed is to really maximize that. So if I want 23 degrees, press it on auto, you'll see that it changes uh, where that actually comes through for us and it puts it into recirculate as well. Now there is one more little bit of uh, heating control. Now we know we've got uh, ventilation in the rear for rear seat passengers, but we also have some on the right hand side. I shall come to that a little bit later for you. So just by my right knee, we have some more uh, buttons to go through for you. So if I start in the top left hand corner and work my way around, let's go through those. So top left hand corner is where we have the button to actually raise and lower the powered tailgate a lovely feature we know there are other ways you can operate it off the remote and at the back of the car but i can also do it from inside the vehicle as well next one along is it looks like a picture of a car like a plan view of a car with a, a safety shield around it so what this one is for is it's, a, it's another way to get into some of those safety features like road departure mitigation blind spot information collision mitigation braking system so if you wanted to you could turn those off personally I'd leave them on but that's how we could access that really nice and easily just uh, further over we have the parking sensor button and when there's a green light on there that means they're active and ready for you so this car has them at the front and the rear so it'll tell us how close or far away we are by its little beeps and the intensity of those uh, when that is selected just below that we have a heated wiper de-icer button. So this is a really great feature in the winter. So just below where the wiper blades sit, there's a heater element that helps reduce the, the likelihood of wipers refreezing in really cold weather. And it also assists me when I'm cleaning the windscreen first thing on a frosty morning. So a really great feature we've got there. And just to the side of that, we have our vehicle stability assist button. So we can reduce how much it intervenes with the, the driving. So for instance, if we were stuck in shallow mud or snow, sometimes you might need to get a little bit of spin on the wheels to, to, to get moving. You'd press and hold that button. It would desensitize the system a little bit. And as soon as you're going, you'd press it again to re-enable uh, re it. So then moving further to the right, we have a little roller system. This is to adjust the angle of the headlights. So if you put more weight in the back of the car, if you're loaded up and you've got three passengers in the back, of course the car's going to dip down a little bit. You might need to adjust the, uh, the angle of the headlights. Now that brings us nicely on to the controls on the, the door here. So again, if we use the same logic of top left and working our way down, we have the button in the top left corner, which will fold the door mirrors in for us. So if we pop those back out again, to adjust the angle of the glass, we've got a little slider here that go from right, center, and left. And when we're in the desired one of those, we can use the little control panel here just to adjust the angle of the glass. Below that, we have the lock and unlock button. So uh, if I felt uneasy and I wanted to, to make sure that nobody could get into the car from the outside, I'd press the lock button then nobody can use the door handles on the outside to get in and I can press the unlock button when I want people to be able to get in. Just below that we have the button to isolate the control for everybody except mine's electric windows. So I can operate all the windows but actually they can't so that's a nice little feature there. And then when we're onto these we have four different controls obviously for the auto windows on all four windows. If we pull it a little bit to the point of resistance the window will come up and as soon as we release it it'll stop if you pull it all the way of course we have auto windows so it'll take it all the way up for you to get the very best out of your infotainment uh, system you'll be wanting to pair your smartphone whether it's android or apple phone personally i use uh, an iphone so that means that my carplay is actually wireless in this one if you have an android phone um, you would need to actually plug into the little usb just the, the one closest to the driver's knee but because i'm using an iphone then actually i can do this all wirelessly so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to select a smartphone connection up on the main infotainment screen and it's going to ask me if i want to connect a new device so we'll just tap on the connect a new device uh, and it's telling me what i need to do here for apple carplay which it is i need to turn on my bluetooth so i'll do that on my phone go into settings we'll turn on the, the bluetooth and as you can see there's a few down there and it's looking for Honda HFT so we tap on the Honda HFT 
and it will now be wirelessly connecting the two devices together. I have a pin code, it is the same, so we'll pair those off and we need to allow the contacts on there. And now, very, very shortly, the system will be connected. So it's gone through the authentication stage now. Uh, would I like to enable CarPlay? Absolutely, so we'll just confirm yes on there and we should be good to go. So in the infotainment system, there are a lot of apps that you're going to find really, really useful. To see all of them, in the top left corner, you can go into all apps and scroll up or down and see everything that's on there. Of course, your home page you will set so that you've got the ones that you use more regularly. So for instance, you may have navigation, so simply tap on navigation and to, to store in somewhere, all you need is the address, the postcode, or sometimes even points of interest when you've gone to the magnifying glass. If you know the address, you can pop it in the address bar. If you're not sure, like me, where my closest Honda dealer is, and I, I want to get there, tap the Honda dealerships icon. There's one just 19 miles away, and I'd set that to go. So really easy to use. Also on the home screen, we have our audio controls. So for instance, let's go to FM. We can see that we've got uh, Radio 2 on there, we've got Smooth, uh, but if we want to see what else is available, we can just tap on Station List, and that will show us what we have uh, available to us. So let's tune into Corby FM, you can see it's up there, and if we want to store that into preset number one, we just press and hold it, get the confirmation beep, and we see that's now Corby FM preset number one for us. If we go back home, we can scroll to the right hand side and see general settings where we can see things like a system, our connections to smartphones, display, altering sound, those kind of configuration features on there. We'll go back. We also have vehicle settings. So this is where we can uh, modify some of the, the settings on the vehicle, like on our driver assist system setup, for the meters that we've got on the screen, how the, the lighting is, how long it will leave the, the Guide Me Home lights on for, and how we can reset our deflation warning system as well. Really simply, just through there, you'd press calibrate, and it will now actually recalibrate with those wheel speed sensors next time we drive off. So that's all done, nice and easy. If we go back to the, the home screen again, we can slide across there. And I've added onto my favorites, the digital owner's manual as well. So if you ever get uh, stuck for anything thinking, what was it? What was the, the, the salesperson told me when they handed the vehicle over? You can always check your digital owner's manual on the infotainment screen. So as we mentioned earlier, there is a secondary part of heating controls that we have higher up on the dashboard. This is for the air diffusion system. Now, my passenger has a mirrored version of this, but over here we have a vent, which is kind of geared towards me, maybe my face, my hands. And then to the right hand side, we have this L-shaped outlet. This is the air diffusion system. So the purpose of this is to get that nicely diffused air. You'll never feel a big jet stream of, of air coming through there, but what you will get is a nice controlled temperature feel for you. And also it'll be sent past my shoulder for the rear seat passengers as well. Now I can control which of those events is used simply by using this little dial here. So in the 12 o'clock position, it will go through this L-shaped vent for the air diffusion system. If I want to use the more traditional rectangular vent, I'll just turn that to the, sort of the nine o'clock position. And if I don't want air out of any of those, then I would put it to the six o'clock position. So that is completely separate to the controls that we spoke about earlier in the center of the car. So before we get to driving the vehicle, of course, we need to make sure we're in the right position. So we'll get our seat set correctly, uh, recline the head restraint, and also, of course, the steering wheel. So first things first, we have a seat height adjustment. There's a little lever just down by my right hand here that I can pump up uh, or lower down. Actually, that feels about right. And of course, the, the recline is the lever slightly further back than that. So if I just pull that, I can then push back or we'll get the right amount of uh, incline on there for me. That feels nice. Then of course there's the steering wheel. Little lever down here. So then we've got the ability to bring that in, bring it out. I think that feels good. Yeah, that's a nice driving position for me. Now we've got the, the seat base and the steering correct. We know that I can adjust the, the head restraint now, so that's a little low at the moment. That's a good position. 
And the final thing is the seat belt. So I'll plug it in, then of course we can adjust the height where it comes from the B pillar on the car. So just over my shoulder, it's actually looking at a good height for me, but we can raise or lower it just by squeezing in, pinching the little uh, adjuster and raising it up or down, just like this. So now we're ready to start driving. All we need to do is make sure the key is inside the car. And to start the vehicle, we put our foot on the foot brake. Then we press the power button just once and the petrol engine may or may not start. That's going to depend on the state of charge in the high volt battery at the back and maybe the external temperature as well. But in this case, we know we're ready to, to go because we have a picture of the, the green car with the arrows underneath it in the meters in front of us. And we know we're going to drive off in EV because it's showing me that in the bottom left hand corner of the screens there. So now it couldn't be simpler to, to start off. It's a very traditional looking automatic style transmission. So we have a little lever at the front, we pull it from park through reverse. You can see the rear view camera comes on into neutral and into D for drive. Now, simple driving, exactly the same as any other automatic that you've driven previously. What we do have though, because this is a really efficient hybrid vehicle, is a B mode. Now B just stands for brake. Because this vehicle doesn't have uh, engine braking, which is a good thing, because when we use the engine in a traditional car to, to slow us down, that's just wasted energy. What we can do in this particular car is put it into B mode and we can use our electric motors of the hybrid system to slow us down a little bit if we want to. So we get like a synthetic feel of engine braking, but we can harness that energy and store it in the batteries in the back. It's entirely your choice. You can drive in B or in D and you'll feel no difference when accelerating. The only difference is when you come off the accelerator and you're then kind of cruising to a stop. So now we're in B mode, we can actually, if we want to, we can use these paddles. And what they will allow us to do is set the amount of regenerative braking we'll get when we actually come off the accelerator. So remember, these are only going to do anything when we're off the accelerator and decelerating to give us that kind of synthetic engine braking. We have um, four different levels and we get from light to more severe engine braking feel. And you can adjust that just simply using those paddles there. If you choose not to, not a problem, just leave it in D mode and use the regular braking system. This is only to give that synthetic feel of engine braking because it's a more efficient hybrid system. So just behind the uh, shift lever, we have a selection of buttons down here. Right at the top is our drive mode. This is where you can select um, sport, normal or econ. So compared to normal, sport would give you a sharper throttle response, so a little bit more sporty. And on the flip side of that, you have econ. So what econ would do is soften the throttle response, which encourages me to drive that a little bit more economically. Also, it allows my air conditioning to be more energy efficient. So that means it will cycle in fewer times. So I may feel maybe one, one and a half, possibly even a two degree difference in the cabin temperature. But it's my choice, more energy efficient or more temperature efficient. Just below that, we have hill descent control. So this is for low speeds. Um, let's say I'm going down a hill at five miles an hour, quite a, a steep hill. If I didn't have this feature, I could just use the foot brake, but I can't control what pressure braking goes to each individual wheel. With hill descent control, it can. So I press the button and then I can set the speed using my brake and accelerator and it can control if there is any slight sideways movement by operating individually all four corners of the car with the braking system. Then we have our electronic uh, parking brake. So I can take that off because my foot's on the foot brake. I can take that off and at any point I can put that back on again. But of course I can program that when I power off to either apply the braking or not. Simple procedure, I literally pull and hold that for five to 10 seconds, something like that, till I hear a, a little tone come through. I'll release it, pull it again, and I either get one or two beeps to confirm whether it's either on or off that feature. So nice little uh, system that we've got inbuilt there for you. And then we've got brake hold. This is the ability to actually, when we've come to a stop, we've used our foot brake to bring us down to zero miles an hour, the car will hold on the brake pressure for us. 
Now, this is something that we've had previous on HRVs, but now it will actually remember how we've set it. So before you had to turn it on every time you had a driving cycle, now, if you've turned it on once, when you power the car off and back on again, it remembers that so you like it, so brake hold is back on for you. Make your drive even more enjoyable. Okay, so with the, uh, the rear door open now, we can see the little switch here for the child locks. Just simply push it down if you want those to be active. And as I don't want them to, I'm just gonna push that back into the higher position there. Now let's get inside and to throw a little bit of light into the, um, into the, the rear here, just going to touch on that little light at the top there. We've got one for the passenger side as well. And to turn it off would be just that same kind of motion there. Really, really easy to use. But of course the centerpiece at the back is going to be the magic seats. So really comfortable for rear seat passengers. If you've got a child safety seat, of course it can lock into the Isofix points here and I'll show you the one on the back in a moment. But the real party piece is how flat they fall down to give us real large amounts of usable space. That's the Isofix top turn the point I was talking about earlier. And also they fold up to give a real usable space for tall objects um, that you know some other vehicles may struggle with and of course we can do that on both sides really maximizing the amount of load carrying capacity we have so now we've taken a look at the things inside the vehicle let's have a look at things at front as well so just pop the bonnet that's right next to where we release for the fuel flap as well. And when we get towards the front of the car, the little catch is pretty much central and just down there. And we pop up the bonnet as we've got there. So it is a hybrid system, as I'm sure you're fully aware. So you will see some of the orange cabling there. That's to do with our hybrid system, but you will see some very traditional looking items as well. So to make sure that you're safe and also your car can operate to its best performance, Clearly, there's gonna be things like checking an eye and keeping an eye on your screen wash levels. There's the coolant for the, the car itself. It has a petrol engine, so we have oil. We'd recommend that that gets checked um, every time you fuel up, because of course, the engine will be warm and then you'll be somewhere flat. And by the time you've taken a couple of moments to actually fill the car up, the oil level will have come down. So you can get a good, accurate reading. We do have our brake reservoir just behind it so again just as you would do with previous vehicles you've owned keep an eye on the uh, the brake fluid there and if anything looks uh, like it's lowering down of course then we'd recommend you go to your local dealer and have that checked through there is a sticker top right hand corner as we look at it here to do with the, the lithium ion battery. So that's the high voltage battery at the back of the vehicle. Um, but we also have a 12 volt battery here as well. So the 12 volt battery is, um, is there to allow us to arm the alarm, lock the doors and unlock the doors and also allow power from the high voltage battery to drive to our hybrid unit. So of course, this can be powered by a regular battery charger, but the only way you're going to get power into the high voltage battery is by driving it. So this is why we have a little sticker on here, and I don't think this is going to be a problem for anybody. The recommendations are that we should drive this for at least 30 minutes every three months, just to make sure we're keeping that battery at the back topped up. Just a consideration if we're going to leave the car parked for any duration. Now, when it comes to closing the, uh, the bonnet, what we'd recommend is have it about you know, a couple of inches above and just lower it down. So we've taken a look at the items underneath the bonnet uh, to keep you safe and the car operating well. When we were inside earlier, we mentioned the tyre pressure monitoring system, so a deflation warning system. So of course, what you'd want to do is check the actual tyres, make sure that they're good and that they are in uh, you know, proper condition. If of course there's a puncture, then you would need to get that repaired. We have the temporary repair kit in the back should we need to do that. But you know, keep an eye on those and don't reset it until you've had those tire pressures checked. Now, when it comes to looking after your car long-term, of course, you're going to take it back to your Honda dealer and they're going to be delighted to carry out the servicing for you. And now we have digital service records as well. So no longer do we have to worry about having the, uh, the service records on a piece of paper or a booklet that we can lose potentially. They're all stored digitally for us. 
So thank you very much for staying with me on this, uh, this video of the HRV eHev, the new hybrid version of our HRV. We hope that you've learned some new things, refreshed you on some of the technology we perhaps had before. And of course, if you have any further and specific questions on anything we haven't covered here for you in this session, then please feel free to contact your local dealer who'll be delighted to answer those questions off for you. Thanks very much.